All right. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're about to begin this community meeting. And at this time, I'm going to ask uh, to do the invocation. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us another day. And as we come to reckon for things that will affect our children, Lord, we pray that you would lead, guide, and direct us in everything that's said and done. Our only thing that we need, Lord, is your help. And we ask you for that, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Give us safe travel as we go. And we'll give you all the praise. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Overstreet. So, we're here this afternoon to hear your concerns, opinions uh, about the consolidation of the Montgomery County Winona Municipal Separate School District. Okay? And we have with us today representative from the Justice Department and uh, our attorney, Mr. Sinead Allen and it's been hired, Bailey. Uh, so I'm gonna let uh, our facilitator, by the way, is Ms. Brenda Hyde from Southern Echo. And at this time, I'm going to allow members of the Justice Department to introduce themselves and say why they are here. Thank you so much, Al, for the courteous introduction. And uh, I can, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I can tell that this is a community that really cares about its schools, and I'm I, I really am very, very appreciative of the attendance tonight. My name is Fran Cohen. I'm a trial attorney with the Department of Justice. I am in the Civil Rights Division in the Educational Opportunities section. And I'm here with my colleague, Andrew Boucher, uh, who works in the section with me. And um, the reason that we're here tonight is, as Al has said, and as um, the lawyer, your lawyer, Sinead Bailey, has um, told me a little bit about the schools. And we're familiar with um, what's been going on and with the consolidation statute. And I know that the district has also filed a case in federal court to challenge the way the voting allocation goes. I have to tell you all candidly that we, it is not our mission and not our docket to deal with the voting issues. So I'm going to ask a favor of everybody here tonight, which is if you can concentrate on the education issues, that's what our docket is. This district has been under a desegregation order since the 1970s. And the courts are going to be looking in the consolidation to ensure there are equal opportunities given for every student. And that is our mission from the Department of Justice, to see how many, um, how, how the educational opportunities, how discipline is worked out, um, where, if, if there is a consolidation, where students from Kilmichael are placed. I'm going to assume that both districts have to proceed on track A and track B. And track A would be assuming no consolidation if, the, if this district's lawsuit is successful. But nonetheless, there are only 75 days until the consolidation statute goes into effect. So we have to be mindful of track B, which is what issues will arise. I see we have one of the pre-pre-K students here. We're glad to have them. Um, 
But I, I think what we want to understand is what are the particular issues that you see with consolidation? Should one of, what, are, what, are, what concerns and what opportunities do you see with regard to should the high school and the elementary school in Kilmichael remain open? Should they be closed? Is there, um, are there transportation issues? What are the transportation issues that you see? What are the particular concerns? What we have, because of the federal desegregation lawsuit, our mission is to look at factors like um, equal opportunity for student assignments at the schools, equal facilities, um, faculty and staff hiring, um, and extracurricular activities, and I've heard a lot about cheer, but I want to hear more about, you know, extracurriculars, what you see for the county students in terms of um, a, a potential consolidation. So that's what I want to ask, ask you about tonight. Um, I think, you know, in terms of hiring, um, I know that um, faculty and staff have a certain period of time after they've been pink slipped to make a filing with the EEOC. EEOC filings would be something that we would look at to um, evaluate how individuals are treated in this process. So we really come to it, we want to hear about the consolidation. We will be involved in looking at this consolidated district if a consolidation occurs. And I'm going to ask you to focus your comments on track B. The other um, two things I have to tell you is that there are, you can, you can comment in, a no, in three different ways at least. One is to get up and speak tonight, and we encourage you to do that. Another is you can, um, Al White has our contact information and you can feel free to reach out to us directly. And then the third way is that there will be comment forms in, where are they, Andrew? Oh, okay. We have comment forms at the front of the room if you want to make written comments. And um, we will leave with Al White if you have comments about the voting issues, a way to reach our vote, the voting section of justice, which we are not part of, so that you can make comments if you have them on those issues. And I'm now I'm gonna turn it over to our facilitator. Thank you. Kim, the people in the back, there's places up here where you can sit and be comfortable. So if you wanna come up, here's a full bench. We want everybody to be as comfortable as possible. People standing in the back, there's places to sit. We got seats in the jury. Plenty of room up here. And for folks on benches, if you'll slide down just so people could, could for Al to come forward and give a little brief overview as to why we're here tonight and, and specifically how we got here. How did this consolidation come about? Because we don't want to just assume that everybody is aware as to how we got to where we are today. So Al, if you come give a brief overview. And it will be brief. No, uh, when the bill a House bill or bill, Senate bill, it's currently Senate Bill 2495 now, but when the bill first uh, was introduced to us, uh, myself and Mr. Hood, along with Mr. Representative from Kim Michael, uh, Bobby Howe, thank you very much. I'm having my senior moments up here. Uh, as well as uh, Senator Lydia Chassinon. We met with Mr. Tolleson, who's over the Senate Education Committee, and voiced our opposition to the bill uh, on the basis that uh, we would not have any representation as a part of that process. And it, we felt it was a disservice to the constituents in which we were serving. Right. We got elected uh, to serve and 
the process that they had in the bill is that the Montgomery County School District would become abolished June 30th, 2018, this year. Now, we did that in 2016. I'm sorry, let me back up. We first responded to the, law, uh, the bill via letter by a school board attorney, and we gave them ample time to respond. They did not respond, okay? Then we set up a meeting to meet with them. We were told that they would meet with the House, because the bill was also, I think it came out of the House, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is Mr. Hood here? No? I was told that the bill came out of the House, and um, it was kind of, and from our point of view, it was giving the one on the school board a lot of power in terms of how this was being done. And it's fine if it was going to consolidate, but at least let us have a seat at the table with a legitimate vote to represent our students and our parents in the community. Nothing happened. Came back with a tougher bill. Right. And so that's when we decided to pursue legal avenues, given that we were still under the desegregation order from the 1960s. Okay. So with that, I'll leave it there and Yeah, that's good. So, so, so I'm sorry, may I, may I just add one thing? Sure. Thank you. We are, as you know, here from out of town, and if, um, so one thing, um, I see there's some cameras. We don't know the community. If, if when you stand up, you could just say whether you're a parent or live in the community, or if you're press, if you could identify yourself as press so that we will be able to appreciate the perspective of the speaker, that would be very helpful to Andrew and me. So, as Al was saying, um, this consolidation is a result of Senate Bill 2495 that was passed in our state legislature in 2016, mandating the consolidation of Winona Municipal Separate School District and Montgomery County School District. So, that's how we are here today. This is an act of, uh, of our state legislature and was passed by our governor. And so the, the bill mandated how this consolidation was to take place. And Al shared some details that Attorney Bailey is gonna go further in depth about because the Montgomery County School District filed a lawsuit in opposition, as Al said, um, to this consolidation. So now we're going to hear from Attorney Bailey, and when she's finished, we're going to open it up for questions and comments and to hear anyone's ask concerns or opinions and ideas about this consolidation. And as Franz was saying, if you would be so kindly to state your name and where you're from so everybody would know and then make your comment. And we'll proceed that way. So, Attorney Bailey. Thank you. I think just about everybody knows me. I um, was born and raised right here in Winona, and I've been representing the Montgomery County School District since 2001. Um, at the board's request, we initiated litigation in November of 2017, and without getting too much into the specifics of the legal claims, I will tell you uh, what the causes of action are and kind of what the status is. Uh, the lawsuit was initially filed in the Southern District Jackson Division, and the basis for filing it there is because that's where the legislature is. So we have um, jurisdiction, they have jurisdiction, those courts do. Um, the case was initially signed to Judge Reeves, um, and we alleged cause of action based on equal protection violations and the equal protection violation alleged um, on a couple of bases. One was the fact that the interim board, which is the board that's serving now, but 
in the statute, it doesn't actually come into existence until July 1, and they will serve until January 1 of 2019. Uh, the basis for the first cause of action is that it consists, that board consists solely of members of the current Winona School Board. Um, there is no opportunity for representation of the county or uh, opportunity, opportunity to have anyone from the county to participate. Uh, they solely make the decisions. They, uh, as you can tell, they, they invite us to the board meetings and then they go into executive session, um, which is a problem, um, as we've alleged in our, our lawsuit. Um, the other basis of the equal protection claim is that there's disparate treatment of the teachers um, we've, and the faculty. Um, as prescribed by the statute, the Montgomery County School District is abolished as of July 1, and all of its property, real and otherwise, is transferred to the Consolidated District. There are no coordinating paragraphs in this law that abolish the Winona School District and transfer its property to the Consolidated District. So, um, as a result of that, Mike Kent, who has, was at our meeting last week and was also at the Consolidated Board meeting last week, has interpreted that to mean that all of the county's teachers have to be non-renewed, but Winona's teachers don't have to be non-renewed. Um, and that's because Winona's district continues to exist because it's never abolished. It's basically assumed or uh, taken over uh, the county district is and, and, and basically the name is changed. Um, that's his reasoning. We believe that that is also a violation of equal protection. And then the last claim that we've brought is the vote dilution claim, which I think Al is going to, he's got some maps and uh, so that you can see the numbers, but basically the county school board right now consists of three African Americans and two Caucasians, which are elected by all of the members of the county residing outside of the city limits of Winona. Well, the plan that was passed by the Montgomery County Board of Supervisors as directed in the statute, uh, they had to draw two new single member districts uh, from the area, all of the area of the county outside of the city, of, the city limits of Winona. That current plan, both of those, the option that they went with, option A, both of the districts are majority Caucasian. So it's going to make it really difficult, if not impossible, to elect an African American from either one of those districts. I think one is 57% Caucasian and the other one is maybe 61%. Y'all are looking at it. I can't see it. I'm doing this from memory. So that we believe, and we've alleged in our lawsuit, is a vote dilution claim. Because when this board, this, uh, the permanent board, takes place, or takes their seat in January of 2019, they're gonna be maybe one African American on that board. You know, if you look at the fact that the election of those two districts is gonna make it uh, probably unlikely that um, an African-American will be elected from those districts. And right now, as I understand it, the three board members from Winona with the longest time remaining on their term, um, I think would be Cheryl Small, Middleton, and what's the other one? Cyril. So that, that's what that board will look like. Um, so that, that's the, that's the, the third um, claim that we're alleging, the vote dilution claim. Now, we've asserted um, a motion for injunctive relief, which is basically a motion asking the judge to halt the consolidation because we believe we have a very good chance of winning 
on the merits, halted at this point, let us try the case on the merits and see where things, um, see where things land. Um, and you have to allege things like irreparable harm, and we believe we'll be able to show that. Because once this district is abolished, how do you put it back together? No. Um, so we've alleged, we have a motion pending, um, alleging, asking for injunctive relief. That has been filed and briefed and has been sitting before the judge since January. And this case was transferred from the Jackson Division to the Greenville Division, the Northern District Greenville Division, by motion uh, from the Attorney General's office. And, and I just have to state here, that's why I, uh, I had a problem with one of the articles that was published in the newspaper, saying the Attorney General says this fails on all fronts. The Attorney General represents the state defendants. They represent MDE. They represent the State Department of Education. So. Of course they think that it fails on all fronts. They have a vested interest in this. It's not like it was an unbiased opinion. And then we have also, now the state defendant, they filed many motions to dismiss. Those are all pending. And just last week I filed a motion for summary judgment, which is also pending before the court. So I have asked many times, and even asked last week in the, the, the latest filing for the court to rule, and we're just, you know, hoping and praying that the court will rule in time, basically, um, because our teachers every day are looking for jobs with, you know, the situation, understandably, they need some type of job security, and we want to make sure that if we are successful, that we have teachers to teach our kids. And I believe that's a, an up-to-date status of the litigation. So, are there any questions? I'm Bobby Howell, former state representative, and I just want to clarify a couple of things that Al said. Number one, I retired in 2015, and prior to that, I met with the county group and I met with the Winona group uh, on more than one occasion and my goal at that time was to get both groups together and come forth with something that was a recommendation to the legislature but there was this bill was passed in 2016 after i was out of the legislature so i just wanted to make that clear to everybody that i'm not a part of this bill the way it's written <laughs> I'm a Montgomery County parent of three. I feel like this. We elected board members. We're not able to go to them because our board members have been kicked out. We have um, <coughs> teachers that we know for sure that teaches our kids. We have to sit, sit here and wait because our teachers have no job. We wait till our kids come from an all-black school to go in a building with our white teachers. So we don't know how our kids gonna be treated from how we been treated. So can somebody tell us why one of the people is not getting pink slips? Okay. 
And uh, I've lived in this county all of my life. We also do nonprofit work in this county, have been doing it for years. And proud to where you are now. And beyond what you have heard is a problem. You have more problems. And my question is, number one, and I did call the Justice Department because it was just too much for me to sit back and say nothing and do nothing. When I see, and I have not read because I was just turned off, uh, who was doing the proposal to close our school in the first place? How many parents in here know the person who proposed to close the school? Because those people need to be here being held accountable why they want to close your school. Because when we were working the work, they had criteria set to close school. Your governors had committees going out to see what money they were saving. The report came back. It was not worth the work. So why are we still trying to close school there? Go back and do some studying on what happened before you got here. But you got problems beyond here. The other thing is, those people, now I'm serious about that, because I heard who proposed to close the school been around here all my life, the first black school in this county. And another thing is, we don't even know what is proposed for all the resources that Montgomery County have versus what Winona have. Do we know that? Do Montgomery County have more resources than Winona? And then we're going to be abolished and Winona take what we have? The community needs to know the process of what is going on with their school and what is intended and proposed that they are not being told about their children. Because already the work you're facing, what you think is going to happen if it is done? You got to get community involved and find out what is going on. When it was first proposed, we should be out there. Because there is much more that you stand to lose. Your student, your teachers, that is the highest, the largest employer we had in Kill Michael. What is going to happen to Kill Michael? What is going to happen to your student? Even if they come to one another, which I'm against, consolidation. I've never been for it. I know too much about it. I've never been for it. It had not been justified. It has not. And those who propose to merge out of school, they need to be at these meetings. So they can tell the parents in the community why they want to cut your job out, why they want to send your kid to one owner. You need to know what's involved here. Because these are your children. This is the future of your community. When they come to Winoni, if it happened, they got to go back to Kill Michael in their community. And you drain their resources out of that community. What's going to happen? They're not bringing jobs in here. What's going to happen, people? We're looking at things on the national level. Look closer on the local level. Look closer. It's not a, look, this is my opinion. Black and white teachers, black and white parents, y'all need to be getting together and standing up for your job and for your community. We look at the states out there, the teachers who is protesting have not had a raise since when? 10 years, one of them. We need to do, if we want something, we need to do something to retain what we have. Because if you let go of what you got, We can be sitting in some dark places. There are so much, and I try to sit back, but it's just too much. It's too much to lose to sit back and say nothing. I don't have a child in school, but I worked with the school for so many years we did well, but all of a sudden I heard a parent say back there, they do not have a board to go to. We have tried to have meetings to call parents out and inform you on things that were going on uh, in your community, against your student, against your school, and against other things. Hard to get you out. Sad to see us here now.